John, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm very good. So you have a new solo album coming out in January called The Empyrean, mm -hmm. which is quite an experience. I've been listening to it all week. Now, The Empyrean, if I understand it right, means the place of the highest heaven. Is that correct? I understand it to mean the highest point in heaven. Okay. Are you particularly religious? Why did you come up with this term for this record? My religious point of view is something that I can't really um, talk about. It goes against my belief system to, to publicly talk about my own spiritual beliefs. In the case of the record, I think I was more using the highest point in heaven as a symbol for the things in life that we're all reaching for and those things that are sort of out of our grasp, but yet there's some spark inside us that compels us to want to reach for them and to want to bring ourselves to greater heights, whether it's on an instrument or whether it's whatever it is. As human beings, we just have this need to reach and to reach new heights, and often they're totally out of our grasp, but that doesn't make it any less reasonable to reach for it. It's, there was always a quote uh, the writer William Burroughs used to always quote, which was that there's, there's no goal more worth fighting to attain than... I'm paraphrasing, but it's, mm -hmm. it's that there's no goal more worthy of fighting to attain than immortality, you know. And mm -hmm. and it's just, while I don't think that it's good to, to always be sort of uh, believing that the grass is greener on the other side, I, I really believe in pushing yourself to, to reach heights that may seem far off, but, but to just push yourself to get there. And in my case, that's all with music, you know, it's... it's uh, I, I just, I've just always tried to reach new heights, and, and, and it's also one of the themes of the record that sometimes in your journey, giving up sometimes can be, giving up for a period of time, or can, can actually be a way of regenerating enough energy to keep pushing yourself higher, you know, uh -huh. and musically, and in the theme of the lyrics, the, the music on my record repeatedly keeps sort of going from a murky kind of low to a, to a peak, and then down from the peak, and then to another low, and then keeps reaching up again, and going higher and higher, and then going down again. And it's, for me, that's like a form of breathing, you know? There's, there's been times in my life where I just painted and stopped even playing music, and, you know, and, there, and there's been times in my life where I stopped thinking so creatively on my instrument and started thinking purely technically. And I think that all those things had a value, even though it's not something I'd want to you know, they're not thing, there's not things you desire to do, but I think in the process of trying to go up and up and up, I don't think just solidly doing nothing but going up and up and constantly reaching and pushing yourself, I think eventually that produces a kind of strain where, where, uh, where you won't be able to go up any higher, where you can actually, in the long run, gain more momentum if you listen to your clock inside and you may have to occasionally give up or in a symbolic sense you might have to die in order to be reborn. What I can definitely hear on this record is you're constantly changing your style, constantly evolving, actually disregarding one style after you've done it, both uh, as an instrumentalist and as a vocalist. How do you go about that process? Well, I don't think it is disregarding, obviously, because I really love the whole record from beginning to end, but, but it's, it's more just, yeah, just switching it up and, and changing and trying to approach each song differently and trying to sort of... Like in in singing, like try to try to sort of find a different character for each song. Right. I think it really helped me to. Uh, nobody was around when I recorded my vocals, so being by myself, I found myself. It was much easier to sort of have fun with it and do take do do a lot of takes until I really was having more and more fun each time, as opposed to when you do it with an engineer. A lot of the time, you can't deal with the humiliation of <laughs> having to do more than a couple of takes or whatever. And, and it gets frustrating if you have to do any more after that. Whereas, but when you're by yourself, sometimes you do like 15 takes, and the 15th one is like, well, yeah, you know. So I found myself having more and more fun with it every time that I did it, and messing around more every time and stuff. As far as soloing, you know, it's, I usually try to have some sort of a concept in my head of an of an approach or a sound, or you know, I, I think music should be something li alive and and I don't think that people should just sort of rest on their laurels or, or at least I don't like for myself to rest on my laurels or to 
repeat myself. Did you record the record at home? Uh-huh. It's a, it's a dichotomy. It has a very intimate feel, of course, but there's this huge live drum sound that one would get from, like, a big-time studio album. Well, it's big-time studio, you know? I mean, it's not... <laughs> It's, you know, I think it's a myth that you need like a 15-foot ceiling to get a good drum sound. Our drum room is pretty pretty small and oddly shaped, and, and it's got a really live sound. And we, we got some amazing drum sounds just in the dining room. I don't think studios are all that. I think it was a really poor misconception that I had for a long time that for something to be a real record, you had to do it in a recording studio because anybody at home, just by collecting gear piece by piece, you can make things as good sounding as what they do in a studio and especially if you if you're doing all the engineering yourself as a musician the more the more you play a part in the, whatever the mixing the miking the twiddling of the knobs and stuff it's your opportunity to put more and more of your own expression in the music you know in other words if you play a guitar solo if you're also pushing the faders and EQing it and putting different kinds of reverbs on it at different points it can be an extension of the same feeling that you played it with, whereas when somebody else is doing it in these reputable big studios with high, highly paid engineers, they don't know what you were trying to express. They're not on the inside of the music, they're on the outside of it. And right. then, So, so the, from, to me, the final thing ends up being thinner in cases like that. Yeah, I think you can get a good sound anywhere for drums, you know, like Motown, where they record all that shit. Oh, yeah, sure tiny little room you know it's, it does it just doesn't matter well i was particularly impressed by what you do with your voice on so many of the tracks it reminded me of john lennon who was constantly changing the sound of his voice yeah yeah I'm, I, you, with anything like i i need to hear with with music the music that i like the way it sounds is where there's constant sonic variation going on where where all the sounds are where there's movement going on i think even just in the nature of playing a series of notes on a guitar or a series of chords it's it's change that affects us it's that sense of regularity and at the same time of change and variation that that has that's that magical quality in music that just makes it constantly mean new things to us and as a song goes on where the emotional response is constantly going in unexpected places and so i, I feel like the sound with all the you know technology that's come about in the last you know, 100 years of being able to record stuff, that's the thing I like to take advantage of, is to be able to go from one atmosphere to another atmosphere and to go from one type of vocal sound to another and to make it seem far away, to make it seem close, to make it seem small, to make it seem big, and to, to create surreal effects with, you know, flipping the tape backwards and doing weird things with reverbs and delays and stuff. I, I like to hear music changing all the time, you know, so so it's it's like when I hear records that are just mixed in a straight ahead way where everything's yeah. just balanced with each other and nothing's too soft and nothing's too loud. It, this is boring to me. It's not what I want to hear. And when we when we were mixing this record, my main thing was just to have something that I could blast on the stereo system late at night and you know trip out to you know <laughs> just, just have something where you're just like whoa how did that happen how is that possible you know just yeah, like. Yeah. It, it, I, I don't at all record to like impress people or, <laughs> or to try to do something good or something. It's more just like I, I want to make something that I like that I would want to hear, you know. And in rock music, those, my favorite mixed records are always these ones that like, you know, that where where the where the artist had some say whether you know someone like John Lennon who who was real adamant about having different vocal sounds in the Beatles or whatever or or Jimi Hendrix you know on electric ladyland or george clinton on the first few funkadelic records i like it when they just take their same musical sense that makes them sing or play in the way that they do and they apply it to the mixing console you know so so that that was that was totally my approach for this was just to trip it out as much as possible now i'm a big fan of johnny marr but i must say i could not tell at all which track he is playing on so can you tell me which track he's on he's on two tracks he's on uh heaven and he's on central okay okay yeah i guess in in heaven none of the guitars are me until the second verse like he he's basically doing the first verse and the first chorus all righty and the first chorus is like a breakdown kind of chorus Mm -hmm. if i'm remembering correctly he he basically does the first verse and the first chorus and i do the second verse and the second chorus and the rest of it's all me 
so and he's so he's and he's playing multiple guitars there you know he messed around a lot and he basically you know we just had one night so while he was here uh touring with modest mouse so so we so we just like uh he just heard the songs once and uh just fiddled around for for a few hours and then when we mixed we figured out how to make it like work in the structure of the song and that that was our approach for all the songs was to kind of record a lot of tracks and figure out in the mix how we were going to I mean, I I say we. It was me, <laughs> but figuring out in the in the mix like who, wh- uh, which instruments are going to be used in which section, and you know, doing a lot of tape edits and stuff like that. And then the uh, on the other one, central, he did this. He did an acoustic guitar that's right. like uh, okay. strumming. Yeah. And oh wait 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 wait, did I say heaven? I meant uh, enough of me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Enough of me is the one where he plays on the first verse and the first chorus. He played on heaven, but we didn't use it. Maybe okay. to print that. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 uh, but enough of me. He he's on the first verse and first chorus, and on on central, he he plays acoustic rhythm guitar and he plays. Yeah. He did this really neat harmonic thing, a really interesting uh, hand technique with, and uh, and it has some echo on it and stuff. There might be one other part on Central that he that he plays, but I can't remember. I haven't heard it in a while. Now, did you give him any kind of direction, or did you no, just play the... No, I, I, that's the thing. Like, I, I've kind of learned from making records for a long time that if you really want to capture a good energy on a record, mm-hmm. it's best to just, first of all, to have only people playing with you who already would have a, a sense of what you're doing and are already sort of have a have a soul connection to what you're doing you know right you don't want to have somebody just because they can technically play but you know you want to have somebody who understands your point of view that you write music from you know and if you have that like the best thing to do is to just let them do whatever they do you know like you know there's a little a little like when josh and i are doing stuff we have a little verbal communication about it but basically like he understands my music and knows where it's coming from so I, I like to just let him do whatever he does, and then I just figure out during the mix. During it's so it's so easy in the mix. Sometimes when people are too quick to sort of judge something, like oh that that doesn't work right for this section, or that's that's more than a, that's taking over too much. Like they're not they're not using their heads and thinking ahead with how much you can do when you're mixing. You know, like you with you know with EQ and effects and treatments and stuff. You you just wrangle it in there, you know. Yeah, yeah. You just you just sort of form it and like yeah, like like I think when I was first making records, I was too quick to judge things just based on the first listen. And uh, I've learned over the years that if you if you've got a good energy in the room, the spirits of music or the you know the gods of music do their thing with it. You know, like like there there's a plan that's much more elaborate and much more complex and wonderful than anything that you could plan out in your head you know if you just let the energies flow you know now so yeah so i i didn't say anything to johnny i was just like watching him uh watching him come up with stuff was really was really uh educational you know because i've learned so much from his playing to to see that he wasn't because i come at playing from a real uh you know i the theoretical symbols for things are real prominent in my mind all the time when i make music i mm-hmm. even with, even if i'm totally breaking all the rules and playing atonal notes and all that i know what intervals they are and you know if i'm when i'm building chord upon chord i know i know what the intervallic relationship is you know and and with him he doesn't have that st- he d- i think he just learned mu- to play music from doing it and from playing along with old records and stuff and he you know he so so to see the way that in, in his own mind, he's created his own mental symbols for the same things that I use the theoretical symbols for. But, you know, in so many ways, I, I learned how to use things like 13ths and 11ths and 9ths uh, in a musical context from studying his playing because he has really complex chord progressions in, in like, Smith songs and stuff like that. And to to find out that he he he's always been just sort of going by his instinct and going by his own mental pictures and stuff it's it was really neat to watch it just fall into place you know now i'm fascinated is it possible for a player as yourself to turn that off though no reason to like i think there's a period of time when a person first learns those things 
it produces a kind of mental strain where the the instinctual part of the brain isn't isn't as capable anymore of uh, of dominating the brain, and the technical part ends up being overemphasized and and taking up all the brain space you have room for. You take you use up all the brain power you have available to compensate all these technical relationships and things like that. But once it becomes the same thing as talking or something, you know, once it becomes the same thing as you know what the word man means, and it's not a strain to think of a man and to have the word man in your head, <laughs> you know, it, it, there's just, eventually they just become one thing, the, the, the symbol of the thing and the thing itself just become one thing. Uh, the word major third and the sound of it and the look of it on guitar just all become one thing in your brain, you know. You might be using a bunch of different guitars on the album, but if I had to pick a predominant sound, it does sound like a Strat mostly Yeah, that's on all I'm using. I, I don't think I've played any other guitars. It's hard to remember. I might have used an SG on the solo of uh, Central, but I think I might have just made the Strat sound like an SG with an English muffin electroharmonics effect. I, <clears throat> I basically used all the same gear that I use in the Chili Peppers, you know, just the Marshall Major and Jubilee and the and my 62 Strat and my 57 right. Strat. There's so many cool sounds on this record, but if I had to pick one, it's the solo in the song Enough of Me. What yeah, kind of... I, I think that's my favorite one, too. There you go. What kind of overdrive are you using on that? Yeah, I think that's an English muffin, and I, I didn't play that through the Marshalls. I played it through a Fender Bassman. Okay. Because I wanted to get real low frequencies. Yeah. And... and uh, yeah, and wanted wanted to be standing next to the amp and not be too far away from the control room. So that was that. Yeah, I, I was when I was on tour, just messing around in my hotel room. I started to think of that style of playing. Of I was I was just messing around a lot with um, instead of thinking of one note as one note that leads to the next note that leads to the next note to sort of divide the guitar into pieces. So you're you're playing low notes alternately with high notes uh, that have you know a stretch of a, a couple of octaves at least and then and then you, it forces your brain to have to sort of think in two directions at once even though the even though the notes aren't happening at the same time which i remember on my first solo album i did a lot of that where i was playing acoustic guitar parts where they kind of had a bass note and a high note that were at least like a an octave and a third away mm -hmm. from each other or whatever but in this case it's a single note guitar line but your brain is sort of thinking in, of the whole neck. You start to, once you do it for a while, you start to just think of the whole neck as, as one thing, and you don't stay in those boxy patterns that guitar players right, tend right. to stay in, you know. And so it, it was, it was just a fun like. At first, it was just like a fun mental challenge to, to think that way, and then, and then by the time I played it on the album, I was, I had been doing it a lot in my room. I did a little on stage, but it's so different from the way I normally play that, oh. it was, it was. I, I wasn't really enjoying doing it in the band. <laughs> well, it's an amazing solo, just totally mind-blowing. Thanks, man. In the time we have remaining, we have so many reader questions, so I'm going to try to get to as many as we can. A reader named John Franco 888 wants to know, Chad, from the Chili Peppers, is doing his group Chicken Foot. Would you ever consider doing a quote-unquote super group of this nature? No, no. I like making music by myself. I, I wouldn't play, I, if I played with, first of all, I've never heard of Chicken Foot, and I, I didn't even know Chad was doing that, so I don't know who that is or why he's doing it. I'm, I'm, not, comp I'm not comparing myself to him. I'm just saying that for me, like, I, if I play with people, it's 100% because of the musical relationship, and I have no interest in sort of, uh, see, I don't want to sound like I'm comparing myself to him because I don't know what he's doing. It's just... I, I wouldn't uh, I, I wouldn't play with people because they were like also stars and we would go up on stage and be stars together or something you know it's just that's not me you know and and I and I usually find that I don't relate to people who think that way because it's it's uh, less about music and it's more about who they are or something and and uh, I'm I'm really like I just don't think I think I think kind of in general the the personality. Uh, has been overemphasized and music has been underemphasized and it's definitely my uh, intent to to do everything that I can for the rest of my life just to to think of music as a living being and to think what I can do for music and not to think what music can do for me you know 
and uh, and I hope that in my own small way that I can spread that philosophy around a little bit because I really think there's I really think too much emphasis has been placed on the star and I think music is very complete without all the crap that goes along with like fame and ego and all that stuff you know I, photos and videos and all that stuff I, I just I just think music is sufficient unto itself and nothing could be more complete and all those things have just been invented to sell it by business people you know and I just don't think that music needs it you know and I think that in a lot of ways people experiment less when they have their fame to protect or their their income to protect or their way of life to protect you know and yeah and and so much emphasis ends up uh and I, I feel like they do less experimentation with music when you think in that way. I know, I know, I did. You know, I'm a hundred percent about just thinking in terms of what can be done with what what new approaches can be made can be uh, taken to making music and uh, what where are some possibilities that people haven't explored yet. You know, not like what can I do that'll knock people's socks off. You know what I mean? It's like that's just where I'm at. You know, it's like. I mean, I you know I love Blind Faith. I, there's definitely super groups that that I think are awesome, you know. But at this point in time, I think it's just I think it's just necessary to really emphasize where the possibilities are in music and and not uh, anything about like this band will be huge. <laughs> <laughs> um, a reader named Telefaster wants to know: When you pick up the guitar, do you ever have times when nothing seems to be coming out right? If so, what do you do? That doesn't really happen to me because I, I, I kind of care more about studying music and exploring possibilities than I do about doing anything right. If there's not an idea there when I pick up a guitar, I'm, I'm just going to be learning stuff off records or, or studying a chord book or, you know, or, or learning a classical piece out of a book. or you know, Mostly, I, I, since I was 12, I just learned stuff off records and... I don't put that pressure on my relationship to the instrument to walk over to it and to figure out I'm going to play something brilliant, you know. I practice so much and and listen so much that uh, eventually somebody somebody like does something on a record that strikes you or you 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 realize some that some sort of combination of intervals or some certain type kind of rhythmic phrase like strikes a chord in you. Ideas come forth from there you know you it's it's really it, it's you know it's the whole principle of the way they put music together in hip-hop and stuff you just take little pieces from different things and put them in a new context and reorganize them and bend them and you know slice them up and and then there's your ideas you know i think i think it, i think that kind of stuff only happens when people like have too much of a emphasis in their approach to wanting a result right you know having those kind of goals and those kind of that result oriented thinking is real limiting to what you can do and to and real limiting on how much fun you can have when you're doing it you know it's important to remember that there's an endless supply of creativity available in the universe that that creative force that all music has come from is plentiful and it's and it's never going to run out and as long as you don't psych yourself out by putting pressure on yourself and by judging everything that you do if you if you just listen to music and explore the possibilities of your instrument, it's just always going to be there. You don't have to worry about it. You know, it only happens when you make too much of a agenda of trying to do something that's going to blow people away or something. Like if you if you just remember that you're just always just going to be an unimportant person, no matter how much <laughs> people may tell you that you're important. It's not. It's never the person that's important, and and nobody should be intimidated by stars like Jimi Hendrix or Eddie Van Halen or whoever. It's just like those people. They're all just little guys who love music, you know. And what they do has been great only in as much as they love music, and as in as much as they practice their instrument a lot and gave a lot of love to it, you know. Like yeah, yeah. As long as you do that stuff. You don't need to worry about the result, you know. You'll you'll get there when you're meant to, and you'll come up with things when you're meant to, and you'll have a good time the whole time as long as you're studying all the brilliant stuff. We're so lucky we have CDs and records to study, and it's an opportunity to think the way somebody else was thinking. When you play along with something, you're actually like, ex almost like experiencing the same moment that they experienced, sure. and feeling what they felt, and doing what they're doing. It's it's like a mirror through 
through it, it, it's like a mirror through like 40 years of time or whatever if you learn something that happened 40 years ago you know it was a little moment in the studio and then you're recreating that moment with your instrument because you play the same instrument as them it's it's amazing you know it's a it's all like an incredible gift and nobody should put that burden on music to feed their ego in the way that they want it when they expect that everything that comes out of them should be something like fantastic you know a reader by the name of porcelain says i've been playing the guitar for a long time i admire your style i want to know in your opinion is theory necessary to play the guitar or is playing guitar emotionally enough i i definitely think it's enough to to just use your emotions i think a lot of brilliant music's been made like that from it just depends on what you want to do you know it's like i don't think somebody should learn theory just because i say it's a good idea but for me it's been a really good idea and and it makes me it just gives me more insight into the music that i learn and i don't think of each note and each relationship in a in a given piece of music as just being something that came out of thin air which i think is it might seem magical when you're a kid to you know i remember how it sounded when i used to listen to kiss when i was a kid and mm -hmm. to me it just sounded like it all came out of thin air i had no idea how any of it was being done or what the the tonal or rhythmic relationships were you know it uh, it would just all sound like it came out of thin air, and that was a nice feeling, but I think if I would have remained seeing it that way, I think a lot of people, even when they learn stuff, when, when, they're, when, they, when their brain doesn't find some way of finding a mental symbol that equals the uh, intervallic relationship and the rhythmic relationships, I think that that tendency to think of it as all just coming out of thin air and all as being kind of unrelated I think that can be limiting, and I think if a person's going to be really good at it, like Jimi Hendrix was, or Johnny Marr is, or you know the guys in Fugazi, are it's 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 like you you in some way you find a mental symbol. It might not. It's one of those mental pictures, like if like if I try to picture the the feeling of metal in my mind, or the mm -hmm. feeling of a certain type of wood in my mind. There's a mental symbol for it. I don't actually see the feeling. It's the, the sense of touch isn't something that you can see uh, in most cases but there is a symbol of it in my head and i think that that's the kind of thing a person has to develop and it just takes a lot of practicing and a lot of thinking about music and a lot of giving love to music i i think music's always there for anybody who puts in the, the time and the work and i think there's many paths to get to very similar places but i really love learning theory because i can hear uh, if you put on a song i immediately recognize the intervallic relationships to where I've learned it already without even picking up my guitar. And yeah, well, you know, it's possible that somebody can do that without knowing those things, but it's it's all just so clear to me, you know? It's right. Like, I'm really grateful for that, and I, I don't think it would be as sharp of a sense as it is without knowing those things, you know? And I think it's, it's only been a recent phenomenon in a lot of ways amongst people who really work hard at music that they've gone so far with it without learning things because... There was a time where if you really wanted to do something big, uh, other than like folk music or something, you you had to learn how to read and you had to learn how to write music and you had to, you know, learn learn harmony and learn how to orchestrate it. And those things didn't limit, you know, people like Beethoven and Mozart and Stravinsky. And they they only help, like I said. It's only it's, but like I said, you do have to go through a period of strain for a while, and you may you, to to really get the ideas digested. You might have to put your creativity on the side for a little while, you know. And if you're not willing to do that, then it's not a good idea to to learn it. But if you're if you're 15 years old or 16 years old or 17 years old, there's just no reason not to learn that stuff because, yeah, you might have a couple of years of not being as creative as you were before. But how much you're able to do with it once the ideas are digested and then it's not a strain to think about them anymore, you know, it's wonderful. A reader by the name of Cradle 88 says. You seem to love all kinds of music, funk, dance, hip-hop, etc. Is there any particular kind of genre that you've never warmed up to? Well, it's not... I don't really think of music in genres, like... But I like it when they, like, play off of each other, and I really hear the spirit of music more than, like, the formulas that connect one, you know, two people of the same style. Mainly, I, I just don't like it when it sounds to me like music is being made in order to... Uh, impress people or in order to like please business people or in order to like please the masses or whatever I just 
it doesn't sound good to me when it sounds like it was more important to somebody to do something that was going to make them famous or make them loved by people than than that they were doing something that where there was just a harmonious relationship between them and the creative force of music, you know. And and that's a real apparent thing to me when it sounds like somebody's making music for the wrong reasons. I hear it right away. I I think I think this is another thing that besides the personality that too much emphasis is placed on is is the the style of music that somebody's doing or the actual the way they dress or the or the the radio station they would be played on or the section they're in in the record store like to me the the real important element of music is the energy behind it and a sensitive person who loves music can feel that and you know you just know the difference when you hear a band at a point in their career where they were doing it for the right reasons and at the point in their career where they were doing it for the wrong reasons it's plainly apparent you know and yeah. that's the style of music i don't like is when i just feel like somebody's doing something just because they're getting paid a lot to make that record or whatever or because they think it's going to make everybody love them but i guess what this person is asking is back in the day when there was tower records say would you walk in and not go to a certain section because like oh i'm just not into that kind of well music. i go through phases of things like like no i'm real open-minded about music you know mm-hmm. like like I, I like all types of music, and and like I said, I just don't divide it up in my head that way. I like all kinds of things that would, you know, like there's very few of my friends who like who would like. I don't think there's any of my friends who would like everything that I like. Like I, <laughs> I really, I've I've just always been like that. I love a huge variety of things, you know. A reader by the name of Vivi says, four years ago, you said that your lyrics were a big joke. Do you still feel the same way? Hmm. I think that's being taken out of context. Like, like um, I like to play games with my lyrics and and make things that are sort of amusing to me mm-hmm. um, to offset uh, ideas with other ideas in ways that you never would in normal everyday speech. You know, ever since I started really having fun writing lyrics, it's always been in a way to sort of put ideas together that seem contrary to one another or to do things with words. Like I said, that you would never there would be ways that you'd never be able to put them together in everyday speech, but somehow the ideas are informed by the the quality of the music that, that they're joined with. And uh, just like in poetry, where the meter sort of gives a meaning to the words, I think that even it happens in an even more powerful way when you're writing lyrics, you know. And I think you should always be having fun when you're when you're doing things. So So it's like... They're not ideas that make me laugh or that I think are silly or something. Mm-hmm. They're they're just ideas that I that I find amusing and that trigger some sort of a an echo in my in my head that that makes me feel good, you know. Dalgard asks, "How much do you play in a in a particular day? Do you have any kind of set process for your playing?" You know, it's it's always different. I mean, sometimes I'll spend a lot of time with another instrument besides the guitar and that'll have just as dramatic of an effect on my guitar as if, as if I was playing guitar. I remember the time we were doing that, by the way, album, I was playing piano a lot, and it really helped the way that I saw chords on the neck of the guitar, just because chords make more sense on the piano, and you can get a bigger picture of them than guitar, and then you can push yourself with doing certain types of stretches to incorporate the same types of intervals that, that are really easy to, to grab on the piano. You can apply those to the guitar, you know. It's always different, but it's. I think about, and, and and also sometimes it's just as good to be thinking about music as to be actually doing it, you know. Sometimes just sitting there listening to music a lot, you can learn just as much from as playing. But um, when I was a kid, I, I used to practice somewhere between like 8 and 15 hours a day, mm-hmm. and and I, I'm not really any different now, you know, I whether it's on one instrument or the other, or whether it's mixing, or whether it's like messing around with a synth or something it's i'm i'm doing music all day long every day and in the chili peppers i was i was always just uh it would be an all-day thing for me you know it would be like waking up if we were writing a record just wake up you know practice go to rehearsal play for four hours come back eat dinner play all night listen to records it's just it's all i do i i'm not not really too interested in anything else (laughs) 
I did an interview recently with Chad Smith, who basically said that there was about a year or so before the, the Chili Peppers were going to be active again. Is, is, is that basically the plan? No, there's no plan. Okay. Yeah, there's no plan. So you guys haven't... You're going to have to stop the tape recorder. Okay. I, 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 the, the official... I, or, or you can leave it on, and I can just say the official... The official news is just that there is no plans to do anything, and we were on an, a hiatus of indefinite of indefinite length. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's 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 just absolutely no plans to do anything, and and uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, we worked really hard for ten years, and um, you know, there's other things in life. Well, I think your new record is fantastic. It's really a great experience. Cool, man. Thanks so much for your support. Absolutely. Thank you very much for spending all the time with me here. Cool, man.